Okay, put your name. Okay, attention please. We have a small change to our program. Rather than doing the structure of the Divine Liturgy at F and then pointing texts at I, we're going to do pointing texts first because uh, someone has told me they have to leave earlier and that this is very useful for them. So I would ask you to go to page 378, 379 in the prayer book. Okay, 378, 379 in the prayer book. When we talk about pointing texts, what we're talking about is you have a text. So for our purposes this afternoon, we're going to take a very simple short text. The text of the Tropar for the Holy Cross on 378-379. Okay? There, right up there. Tropar holos perche, tropar in tone one. O, o Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Grant victory toward us Christians over their adversaries. And by your cross, preserve your commonwealth. Okay? In the old first edition, it is, among other places, on page 356, 357. And in the new prayer book, among other places, it is on page 378, 379, very top of the page in each instance. Okay? Okay. Now, if you're a cantor, you're going to get a text like this and you have to sing it. So, this is a very simple one. But you have to determine where you will break it up, where you will go up, where you'll go down, etc. And so when we talk about pointing text, what it means is literally pointing that it's going to go up, it's going to go down, it's going to, you know, go long, it's going to go short, whatever, okay? So this is a really good exercise to do it. O oh Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. It's tone one, you all know the melody. Na 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 na, na 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 So you can sing it like this. O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Grant victory to us Christians over their adversaries and by your cross preserve your commonwealth. Doesn't make too much sense though, right? You can do a better job, right? So, how, how about this? O oh Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Grant victory to Orthodox Christians over their adversaries and by your cross preserve your commonwealth. Makes more sense, right? Mm -hmm. Holds together, but it's too long. No, it does make more sense. But it doesn't hold together because it's too long, right? The phrases are too long. So you break it up. O oh Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Grant victory to Orthodox Christians over their adversaries and by your cross and, and by... And by your cross, preserve your commonwealth. In another translation, that's what some people do, actually. In another translation, that's what some people do. But in this translation, that won't work. Okay? So, if you go through it and try to figure it out, what you're hopefully going to come out with is this. O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Grant victory to Orthodox Christians over their adversaries. And by your cross, preserve your commonwealth. And I'm not forcing that on you. If you think you have a better way of doing it, I'm all ears. But if you don't, I'm going to continue. Do you think that's probably the best way? Go ahead. Grant victory. Grant. Grant. Okay. Grant victory. Okay. So, okay. Let's talk. This is a good, good example. Let's talk about this. The melody itself goes, na, 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 na. Right? So you have one dum pa three notes, right? dum pum pa So, if you can use all those three notes, it's better than not using the three notes. So you have, if you have grant, you've missed the na, you just do the da da, right? Grant victory, you've used all three notes. So for that reason, I would say, but I'm not, I'm just me, right? I would say, I would prefer to use grant victory rather than grant victory because I'm using all three of those notes at the beginning. Okay? So that's what I would say. But leave that, you know, we can leave that. We're going to talk now about the pointing. I'm going to suggest that among other things, and again, there's no laws. These are just useful tips, right? That you can do a few things with small marks that will help you. Of course, the first thing you need to do is determine where the phrases are going to begin and end, right? That's number one. That's the exercise we went through at the very beginning of this. You need to know where the phrase begins and where the phrase ends. Then, you need to know where you go up and where you go down. So, these little marks 
up because we read from left to right. If we were in Hebrew, we would do it the other way. But we go up, we go down, okay? So let's just do the up and down here. If there's no mark above it, it's the same tone, same note as the note before. If it goes up, it goes up. If it goes down, it goes down, okay? So, O is the first note. O Lord, is Lord higher or lower than O? O Lord, yeah, so Lord goes up. O Lord, and it goes up again. Lord, so it goes up twice. But if you're holding it twice, O Lord, that means you hold that for two counts. So that's O Lord, save, is save higher or lower than Lord? Lower. Lower. O Lord, save, your people. So that's O Lord, save your people. Do you get it? Yes. People, and, is and higher or lower? Lower. And bless your in. Inheritance. Okay? If a syllable gets one beat, it gets nothing underneath it. If a syllable gets more than one beat, you underline it for how many beats it has. So one underline would be two beats. Yeah, two underlines would be three beats, okay? So barring any underlining, a syllable gets one beat. O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Grant, is grant higher or lower than inheritance? And bless your inheritance. Grant, same note. So nothing. Grant victory. And in English, it's very good when you have a word like victory. To really just to speak, to not to sing victory, but victory. It's traditional. In, 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 you look at the old hymn books, it's always done that way. Grant victory. So we're training that as one syllable. Grant victory to up or down? Up or down? down. Two yeah. is down. Two Orthodox Christians over their adversaries. Correct? Okay. Adversaries and up or down? down. And by your cross preserve your common wealth. Okay. So that is a, that's one example. Okay. Let's go to have a really fun example. A really fun example. It is on page. 363 in the new book and on page 369 in the old book. So 363 in the new book and 369 in the old book. Did anybody do your homework and try to figure out what the pattern was for tone three tropar? <coughs> anybody do your homework? No, I gave you homework. <laughs> hey, this is serious stuff, man. Nobody did it. No. Yeah, it's A, B, A, C. Well, we'll talk about this in just a minute. Okay, let's just start with this. Let the heavens rejoice. So it's let the let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth earth earth, earth I'm sorry, that's wrong. Earth, earth be Glad. Okay. Fourth. Which is the new, t uh, the new book? The new book is 363. The old book is 369. Tone 3 tropar. 
For the Lord, let the earth be glad, for, so that's up, for the Lord has shown strength with his arm. Okay, we'll come back to this. What, just give me the next word so I can write them. He has trampled death by death. Trampled down. Uh, he has trampled down. Yeah. Next one. He has become the firstborn of the dead. Okay, next one. He has delivered us from the depth of Hades and has granted to the world great mercy. <clears throat> from the depth of Hades and has Granted to the world great mercy. <clears throat> okay. Father Volodymyr has assured me that hopefully by next month we'll have the whiteboard and we'll be able to do this in a better way, but for the time being, this is what we got, so this is what we use. Okay. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, for the Lord has shown strength with his arm. He has trampled down death by death. He has become the firstborn of the dead. He has delivered us, no, he has delivered us from the, yeah, he has delivered us, that's wrong, from the depths, from the depths of he, yeah, from the depths of, he has, he has delivered us from the depths of Hades, yeah, that's wrong, forget this line, depths of Hades, and has granted to the world great mercy. Has granted to the world great That's why this is so much fun. Because you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven beats on that one particular syllable. Three go up, three go down, one goes up. Pointing the text is very helpful as if you know the melody. If you don't know the melody, it's pretty well useless. Okay? But this is the way musical notation started. And when you have this Znameni chant, or you know, the new, what they call the pneumatic, the orig origins of the Byzantine, etc., this is the way it started. So, one thing that also helps, because sometimes you need to know where to put the accent. Well, always you need to know where to put the accent. It helps when you're using these tones to try to keep the accent as close to the end as possible. If you know Greek, you know that in the Greek language, the accent can only fall on the last the second last or the third last syllable of the word, word. The accent on any word cannot fall anywhere else. It is absolutely impossible in the Greek language. That's a good rule for us to follow. Because whenever we're putting the, the, the accent, because you can imagine ways of singing this. He has delivered us from the depths of Hades and has granted to the world 
No, no, let's, let's do it differently. He has, del he has delivered us from the depths of Hades and has granted to the world great mercy. You see how it's sort of you know, like this? You want to keep all of the ending phraseology as far close, as close to the end as you can. Okay? And it should reflect the accent of the word and the, the way the word uh, falls into the, um, into, the, into the sentence. So the only thing we need to know for the pointing of the texts, we'll, if we have time, we'll do a little, we'll do a little um, exercise for it. But I would, I would ask you, um, when you go home, take the, take, a, take a text, right? Take, tone for tropar whatever, bohoro de sejivo, whatever you take, okay? Go into the uh, tones here, right? Follow the notes, take the text, and just write out the text and point the text according to the notes. That's a good exercise to do. Because if you go, now let's take, let's take a more salient example if you're a cantor, okay? If you go to page in the old book, page um, 816 in the old book, and page um, 834 in the new book. 816 in the old book, 834 in the new book. You see at the bottom in the old book, the tropar in tone four, mayuche generalus silen, having a fountain of healings right, on mercenaries, and it's at the top of the page in the new book. Okay, you have those tropars in tone four, and you have to know where to break them up, where you're going up, where you're going down. You don't want to put them all under notes. If we tried to put everything under notes, we'd go insane. Okay, you know the melody and you, um, how do you say, you assimilate the notes to the, to, the, to the words and the words to the notes, etc. You, you, you combine them, you integrate them, okay? So your tools are up, down, underlining if there's more than one beat per syllable. And one other thing you can do is if you need, if you need to know where it's going to stop, um, I'm going to the store. Okay, you can, you can circle it. If you are doing it, if you're doing a text on a computer, if you're actually writing it out for people who are going to be following, you can bold that. You can bold that. Or another way of doing it is to use capitals. So, That's a way of, if you want to put emphasis on a particular syllable, you can bold it, you can use capital letters, okay, you can circle it. If you have those four, those four tools, the up, the down, the underline, and then one of these, one of these, and you know the melody, and the people singing know the melody, you can stick together no matter what. Okay, please. Вы сказал грецкому тексту, то як і то на на перше, третє. No, the last, the final. Wait a minute. The final, the ultimate, and the penultimate. Ultimate, penultimate, subpenultimate. I think that's what it is. Yes. The end in line is more than one syllable. Is that what it is? <coughs> yeah. If you have one syllable, here. Let's pull this back. If you have, I'm sorry, one beat per syllable. Okay? Mm -hmm. You don't underline anything. If you have two beats per syllable, you underline once. So everything past one gets underlined. So, O oh Lord, right? So O oh has nothing because it's one beat. O oh Lord, you just count that, okay? And again, I'm not saying there aren't other ways to do this, because there are. But this way I have found to be very useful. 
Okay? So you know up, you know down, you know how many beats per syllable, and you know if you want to give an emphasis at a particular word, maybe to, you know, if you have a phrase that has a comma in the middle of the phrase and you want to have like a little pause there, you might just circle that. Okay? Please, Mark. Oh. How are you, how are you marking the slur in which case no word? Pardon me? Two sounds on one syllable, a slur. How are you marking that? Two sounds on one syllable? Lord. Just like that. Okay. Yeah, just like that. Again, this only works if you know the melody. And this, what this does is you prepare so that you know the melody and you know what you've written there. Because what I might write might not make sense to you. Okay? Good? Please. Uh, what the heavens you have, what, what, what value did you give to the word heaven? Let the heavens rejoice. I wonder, couldn't we uh, make heaven just one syllable? Let it is. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the heavens, it's one syllable. No, no, it's two. Oh, heavens. Oh, yeah, you could if you want to. I, I, for this melody though, because of the way tone three melody works out, let, let the heavens re, you know, it's like the extra syllable helps there with that melodic phrase. Let the heavens rejoice. You could do it differently. I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying to me. Yeah. That heavens and earth have the same value, just one syllable. You could do it. Yeah. I would disagree with you, but you could do it. Yeah. 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 Okay. I um, see. But how could the heavens of the earth have the same value? How could the heavens of the earth have the same value? What kind of theology is that? It's like, okay. Anyway, it's you know, but you know what? It's funny. It's it's funny though that you can you can do theology with this. If you ever have a chance, read the story about Bach's triple fugue. And I believe the German emperor was named Frederick, or something like that, who was like a non-believer, more or less. And Bach wrote this fugue to prove to him about how the universe really is made by God. It's absolutely amazing. You know? So yeah, you can do theology with music very easily. Please. So the overriding, uh, 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 I'm not sure, overriding thing that has to be when you do re sing this way, or what, the, it has to be clearly understood. The text is important. That's yes, the, exactly. You are yeah, to the yeah, text. yeah. We're not there to make noises. Yeah. yeah. Do you recommend to sing when you say that text is there to be understood? So then, do we do it extra slow to emphasize every single syllable, or do we kind of go sentence pace? Depends. Depends. It will depend on what you're singing, then who you're singing for, and when you're singing it. And to whom you're singing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, but at the same time, we do we do have to say that people aren't saved because they understand. Mm -hmm. So the understanding is important. You know, we call it, you know, slovesna služba, logiki latria, right? The rational worship, right? Mm -hmm. So it has to be understood. But people who are mentally challenged and don't have more than a third grade mental understanding can be saved too. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't fall into that trap of, you know, being too intellectual about it either. You know, it's important to understand if we can, but the understanding is only part of it, okay? And that's why the music is so important, because the music takes the words to a totally different level if it's done right. It, you know, it really, it integrates everything for us. Okay, that's pointing texts. Any more questions about pointing texts? Okay, like I say, I would suggest you go home, take one of the tropares or stichiri that we have under notes already, take the text, point it for yourself so you get familiar with that. Is it homework or just uh, Oh, if people do it, nobody did the homework yeah, last time, so, it's like, you know, yeah. I have a question. The, why did you put the uh, separation line like uh, in Oktoi? Where? The third, third edition. Where, 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 where? What, what are you talking about? Okay, let me stop. For, uh, for instance, where? Oh, oh, for the yeah. date, wait, this line. Yeah. This, this is supposed to put like in Oktoi, very easy, you know. That's no, no, I'll, t I, I'll tell you why. It's very simple. Because in the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Canada, some places they use Galician chant, 
and some places they use the cave and chant. And you can't break them up the same way. It won't work. I know. I did all the Galician stuff in no, Edmonton, and I'm doing the cave and stuff here. Still, you use octoic. You use octoic for stichiras. But the octoic isn't in here. No, I understand. Yeah, so that's why. That stuff... It's a separate book. Pade <laughs> Yuria. Like, this isn't enough? You want me to put out another book now? Like, we have, I know, it's very good, but that's what I use. Yeah, that's what I use for this. But we can't do it. I know. But again, for this book, for this book, it's impossible. Because if we make the, if we make the, 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 the lines for cave in here, they're going to have problems in some cases out west. If we make the lines for, you know, Galician out west, we're going to have problems out here. Yeah. It's just the way it works. Because yeah. the musical phrases do not fit the same according to cave and a cave to Galician. So that's the answer. And if God gives the time to put out a whole octoi, well, God bless us all, you know. So, okay. Dobre. Um, dobre. So, let's go to the order for tropars at Liturgy and Vespers. You all have got... Those of you, if you want Ukrainian, I've given some of you this in Ukrainian today, but everybody else should have had this. It's on, it was sent to all of you in English, the concerning the order of and at the little entrance of the Divine Liturgy. And I have the same thing in Ukrainian, if anybody needs it. In Ukrainian or in English? Okay. Dobre. Dobre. Okay. So, this is very important. At the Divine Liturgy, after the little entrance, we have tropars and conducts. Okay? We spoke last time. The tropar and conduct, they're both small hymns. Tropar is sung at the end of Vespers. It's often called the dismissal hymn because of that, because it's sung right before the dismissal of Vespers. And the conduct is sung at the sixth, after the sixth ode of Matins in the canon, okay? At the Divine Liturgy, the order that you sing the Tropar and Kondak according to will be dependent upon who the patron saint of the church is. It will be different for the most part if the church is named after Jesus Christ, Christ the Savior, Holy Resurrection, Holy Nativity Church, whatever, or if the saint, uh, church is named after a feast of the Mother of God the Holy Protection, the Nativity of the Mother of God, the uh, Holy Sophia, Saint Sophia, etc. Or if the church is named after a saint, Saint George, Saint Demetrius, whoever it would be, okay? All saints would be saints. It wouldn't be Mother of God or, yeah. So, all saints of Ukraine, that would be the feast day for the temple. Okay, so that would be your Tropar and Kundak. Holy Spirit is a, a feast of the Lord. Good, 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 um, a good point. Holy Spirit is a feast of the Lord because it's Pentecost, right? <coughs> if it's a Troitska Tsarkva or, or Svetoho Ducha, it would be Blahoslaven Jesu Christe Hevoše Naš. It would be for the Tropar for, um, for um, Troitsi. And it's, it's regarded as a feast of the Lord. So it falls into that category for Tropars. Yes? Next question. Uh, for example, if you want to build a church, new church, who decides the name of that church? The people can ask and the bishop decides. Christ the Savior, what's his feast day of the church? Well, that's a real good question. That's a real good question. It's sort of like take your pick. You know? Okay? He asked, he asked if, the, if the church is named Christ the Savior, what's the feast day? They know it. They know it in the church because Yeah. Exactly, right. And that's it. Okay. So, this shows you on a Sunday and then later on on a weekday how you find out what the order of Torpars is. The first thing I'm going to say to you is this is not complete. This is for normal times. When you get to Lent, when you get after Easter, when you get big feast days like Christmas or Theophany, you're going to have a little dipsy doodle there occasionally. But if you have this, and you have this, you will be fine. Everything you need to know is here and here, okay? Because if it's the third Sunday of Lent, you open up this book to the third Sunday of Lent, and it tells you exactly what you're going to do, okay? Okay, so, um, I'm just going to go through this, because most of us have churches dedicated to saints, so I'm 
only going to go through it for this church for a saint. Okay? So we go to number C on page 2 in a church dedicated to a saint. When one of the twelve major feasts of the Lord falls on a Sunday, tropar and kondak of the feast. Okay? This is elementary. The feasts of the Lord are number one. Okay? Name me feasts of the Lord. Hospodni Sviata. Name me some. Nativity. Nativity. Ascension. Ascension. Theophany. Transfiguration. Theophany. Okay, yeah. So you got it. Okay? So feasts of the Lord are number one. Okay? And no matter what, the last kondak or the Theotokion, the hymn to the Mother God sung, is, is preceded by both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. So, if it's a feast of the Lord, please. Is that um, for, uh, across the board for all the other situations that we always do both now the last thing before the last? Um, Yes, yes. Uh, it will be a conduct. Yeah. Whether it's a conduct or a theotokion, theotokion. like a oh, protection of Christians, right. so always this always precedes it. And I think that's so the priest knows we're almost done, right? Among other things, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the priest, the priest, the, the priest, yeah, it's like, it's like, <laughs> both now, oh, okay, yeah, right, okay. So, so. Um, but yeah, that's one of those little signals. It tells you, you know, like in, in Holy, in Sviate Bosche, Slava Tzu, you know, you always do that Slava Tzu before the end, you know, to let you know. So, both now always precedes the final one. If it's a feast to the Lord, you just have a tropar and kondak. The tropar is here, kondak is here, glory both now. And that's all you do, right? Like on Christmas, on Theophany, you have the tropar, glory both now, kondak, right? That's the simplest one. So, number two, when one of the great feasts of the Lord, not one of the twelve major ones. So what could be a feast of the Lord that's not one of the twelve major ones? Can you think of one? The dedication. A feast of the dedication of what? Of the of the temple? That no, no, that, that's actually, uh, that, that's a weird one, because it's regarded as a feast of the Theotokos in some circles and a feast of the thing. Circumcision? Circumcision is one. If you take the Feast of the Dedication of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, that would be classed as a Feast of the Lord. Okay, things like that. You have secondary feasts, okay? So a feast like that, if it falls on a Sunday, Tropar of the Resurrection, that is of the tone, of the Feast and of the Saint, that is the Saint of the Temple, Kondak of the Resurrection, that is of the tone, of the Saint and of the Feast. So you would do Glory of the Saint, which is the Temple Saint, and then both now of the Feast. Go ahead. And in our churches, uh, I mean, I don't know what other churches do, but to do one, like we're St. Vladimir, but we never do the same I know, Vladimir. I know. I'm, I'm telling you what it's is called for, for yeah. and then after I'm done, we'll talk about what is done. Okay? Because sometimes if you follow all of this, you'll be there for 10 minutes singing Tropari. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've been at the monastery in, 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 in Rives Junction, and they sing every single one. So sometimes they'll be singing 12, 14, 16 tropars and kondaks, okay? The order is different. Where? It's supposed to be. Where? Um, in number two under C. Yes, it's different from number one, right? No, yes. different from the first half to the second half. For the tropar and the kondaks. I don't understand you. You've got the tropar of the resurrection of the feast of the saint. Yeah. The kondak, you have resurrection. Saint, the saint of the feast, feast. yes. They're not the same order. No, exactly. Okay. We'll talk a little bit so about that, too. That yeah, order. yeah, no, it's not. And we'll talk a little bit about that, too. Okay? To continue, number three, when one of the 12 major feasts of the Theotokos falls on a Sunday. Well, there aren't 12 of them, but there are four feasts of the Theotokos, which are classed as great feasts. Her nativity, her entrance into the temple, the um, presentation in the temple, in some cases, the Annunciation and uh, the Dormition. Okay, so for those feasts, that's what we're talking about. 
those five, like I say, one of them, some people class as a feast of the Lord, some people class as a feast of the Theotokos. Okay, then we sing the tropar of the tone, tropar of the feast, Kondak of the resurrection, Kondak of the feast. So you see here on a great feast of the Theotokos, on a great feast of the Lord, the temple tropar is not sung. Okay, number four, when one of the great feasts of the Theotokos, but not one of the twelve, like Pokrova Bosho Imateri, the Holy Protection, like the deposition of her robe in the church of La Herna, those other feasts of the Theotokos. When it falls on a Sunday, Tropar of the Resurrection, of the feast and of the saint, conduct of the resurrection of the saint and of the feast. Okay? Number five, on a Sunday which falls during the forefeast or after feast of a feast of the Lord or of the Theotokos. So these are the great feasts. The great feasts have what are called a forefeast, Pered Sviato, so, for example, what's the Pered Sviato for um, uh, the, the four feast for the Nativity? It's a bit of a trick question because there are actually two. But what's the four feast for the Nativity? For Christmas. There are two right answers. So, yeah. what? What? Okay, this is part of it. That we have this whole period in preparation for Nativity of 40 days, which has the Feast of the Holy Fathers, Holy Forefathers, etc. In one sense, that's a forefeast. The actual liturgical forefeast begins on the 2nd of January. Okay? So if you, for example, go to page... Um, uh, tu -tu -tu. Oh, we, oh, I'm sorry, we took it out of here. Okay. No, I'm sorry. It's here. There it is. Okay. On page 578-579, you have the Sunday of the Holy Fathers, Tropar of the Four Feast, on tone four, Tropar Pered Prasenstvo. In the new book, it is on page, page 578-579. In the old book, it is on page... Um, 554-555. You see that tropar of the four feast? Technically speaking, that tropar is only sung between January 2nd and January 6th on the old calendar, of course. You know? Because that four, four feast period becomes intensified during those five days before Christmas. Okay? The four feast for most of the feasts of the Mother of God. For example, if you had the Feast of Dormition in August, right? It's a one-day forefeast. Then you have the after-feast. How long is the after-feast for Christmas? Twelve days. What? He said twelve days, two days, okay. Technically speaking, technically speaking, after Christmas, you go until the 31st of December, the 13th of, 13th of January, okay? So it's like a one-week after-feast. And during that period in the four feast, you would sing the Turpar from the four feast. And during the period after feast, you sing the Turpar of the feast. So different um, feast days, depending on their liturgical solemnity, have longer or shorter four feasts and after feasts. So here's a real simple one. What is the after feast, Poprasdenstvo, of the of Pascha, of the Feast of the Resurrection. How many days is it? 40, 40 days, because all during those 40 days we sing Christos Voskres, right? Mm -hmm. Every day. So that's your cue, that in those periods when you see fore feast or after feast, in the fore feast, there is a specific tropar for the fore feast, the Pered Prasdenstvo. In the after feast, that one, two, seven, eight, 40 days, where you still continue the celebration of a feast to a certain degree, that tropar is the tropar of the feast day itself. And that's what I want, point I want to make here, okay? The four feast has its own particular tropar, which is not the tropar of the feast. The after feast uses the tropar of the feast, because you're still celebrating that feast day. Go ahead. Um, where do you find these dates? I mean, sometimes... Uh, the uh, they, they, are, they are given in, yeah. Some of them are here in the Dobri Pastir, but they should be given in any good church calendar. It yeah. will say... Yeah, it will say, no, not that one, but I'm talking about a like liturgical calendar. Yeah, it should. Okay, please. I haven't finished reading the Tukakon decoded, but will there be some information on that? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because, I mean, you have feasts like the presentation. Presentation is a good one because it's sort of 
you know, I don't know if you remember about three, four years ago when Pascha fell on April the 4th, which is the earliest it can possibly fall. Well, what that means is the Feast of the Presentation on the 15th of February on the old calendar was actually on the first day of Lent, which can't happen. You can't serve a divine liturgy during Lent. So the, the feast day gets transferred to the Sunday before Lent. Okay? And then it would normally have like a four-day post-feast, but that post-feast is just kicked out because you can't have a festal period during the first week of Lent, right? Because it's a time of uh, penitence, right? So that kind of stuff will happen. So if you see things in the church calendar where one year, you know, one year the... Uh, feast of the presentation has a four-day after feast, and the next year has a two-day after feast. It's not arbitrary. Okay, so that's why you need a good church calendar as well. Okay, to follow along. Okay, but I want to make the point because when when we read these things, and there's no one to explain them to us, it really can just make you crazy, and you're not sure which tripod you're supposed to be singing at all. Okay. Number six, a leave taking. What that is is the last day of the celebration of a feast. So what is the leave taking of the feast of Pascha? When's the last time we sing Christos Voskres? What? Pascha. What? The day before ascension. Day before ascension, yeah, because yeah. ascension is another feast. Last day we sing Christos Voskres is the day before ascension. Okay? <clears throat> so on the leave taking, the service is generally more like the feast day. So it says, uh, if it falls on a Sunday, throw part of the resurrection, of the feast, conduct of the resurrection, and of the feast. Okay? And then it gives that little note. Sometimes a throw part and conduct of a saint may be added if we sang the polyelios for that saint. What that means is if the saint is of a certain rank, and we're going to talk about ranks in a minute, you will include their tropar, but if he's not, you don't. Okay? Then, number seven, when the memory of a saint for whom we celebrate a vigil. Remember I talked about vigil earlier? It's a more uh, intense liturgical commemoration. Okay? Uh, if it falls on a Sunday, to the part of the resurrection of the saint, conduct the resurrection of the saint of, of the church and protection of Christians. Okay? Protection of Christians um, is what we use as the last hymn to the Theotokos if our church is not named after the Theotokos. If it's named after the Theotokos, we use her conduct in place of that. Okay? And then the last one, which is the normal case most of the time, when the memory of a saint for whom we do not celebrate a vigil, that is, a middle or low-level saint's commemoration, when it falls on a Sunday through a part of the resurrection, that is, of the tone, of the church and of the saint. Conduct of the resurrection of the tone of the church of the saint and protection of Christians. So just to give you an example, my parish is named after St. John the Baptist. It's a Sunday, it's tone one, and we have the commemoration of St. Phocas, the um, uh, Bishop of Sinope, who's a small, you know, saint, a three stichita saint, okay? so. What we would do on a Sunday is we would sing the tropar of Tone 1, the tropar of St. John the Baptist, and the tropar of St. Phocas. We would sing the conduct of Tone 1, the conduct of St. John the Baptist, glory, conduct for St. Phocas, both now protection of Christians. If you do it in full, that's the way you do it. But I'm going to tell you right now that for the most part, you're going to have two levels of abbreviations. The first level of abbreviation is, if, unless it's a big saint, saint you know, basically in, in the prayer books, we've only included big saints, right? We've only included saints for whom there is at least a polyelios and usually a vigil. So they're higher level saints. If the saints tropar and kondak are not found in the prayer book, generally speaking, you're just going to omit them. Okay? You're just going to omit them. That's the first level of abbreviation. So in my parish, generally, what we will do is tropar of the Sunday, tropar of St. John the Baptist, conduct of the Sunday, glory, conduct of St. John the Baptist, both now protection of Christians. That's what we would normally do. In Holy Trinity Church, it's much simpler because it's after the Lord, so you don't worry about the saints at all, right? 
well, not, not at all, but you don't worry about any of the smaller saints, right? Um, for the Mother of God, if I'm in a church of the Mother of God, it's simpler. And I mean, you have the schematic here, but, you know, you have the tropar of the tone, the tropar of the Mother of God, glory, kondak of the tone, con, uh, both now kondak of the Mother of God, you know, the, 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 the kondak of the saint of the temple, the feast of the temple, and you're done, okay? So, um, that is the lowest level of abbreviation, I would say. If you're not going to do it in full, that's how you would make it shorter. And then, you know, Sandy has mentioned already that next level where there are people who actually exclude the saint of the temple as well, the Tropar conduct for the saint of the temple. Uh, I don't know if any of, any of you ever read the book Facing East by Frederica Matthews Green. It's a really good book. If you can get, yeah, you can get it, it's easy to get. Facing East by Frederica Matthews Green. It is a year in the life of their mission parish. She and her husband were Anglicans. Uh, they, be, they were actually, they, they served, well, he was a priest and she was the priest's wife in Anglican parishes in the church. They became Orthodox. And then they started a little mission church in Linthicum, Maryland. Mark, you've been there. Yeah. And so this is a story about like the, the first year in the life of their little mission parish when they're serving in rented, um, rented premises and they're doing a liturgy at Basil's house every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m., right? And the church is in the name of Holy Cross. So they're, what is their temple tropar for the Holy Cross? Oh Lord, save your people. So she's talking about this and she calls this and now we sing the Tropar of the Holy Cross. This is our parish's fight song, you know? So that's, you know, we sing the fight song for our parish. That's, that's what that is. Okay. Um, What's the name again? Uh, Facing East. And who's the author? Frederica Matthews Green. She's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Okay. So I've just gone through that. Now, we're going to do a little exercise real quick. Uh, do you want Ukrainian or English? Ukrainian or English? Ukrainian. Okay, you got it. Ukrainian or English? Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Ukrainian or English? Russian. Ukrainian or English? Um, one question that I got was, where do we find protection of Christians in the prayer book? It is found at the end of the prayers after Holy Communion, after the liturgy, which is on page... Poo, 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 poo. on page 354-355 in the new book and and on page 348-349 in the old book it is also found if you go to the end of the Pentecostarion the feast of all saints of Ukraine it's found at the end of the tropars there, which is on page 538-539 in the new book. And and 516, 517 in the old book, okay? So it's found twice in the uh, prayer book, okay? So, would anybody like to share with us what you've got for your assignment, if you've got it together yet? I don't even know what to do. Okay. Let me, yeah, you have, to, you, have to, you have to tell me the order of the tropars for the day. I'll just go through one quick thing with you, just so if you, if you listen along, I can give you the level of celebration for each, each one. Uh, for in English, the one on Sunday, Tone 7, Great Martyr Anastasia, is a, a, a medium level. It's not a, not, a, not a high level saint. Feast of the Transfiguration is, of course, very high level. St. Nicholas the Wonder Worker is a vigil level, so it's a high level saint. St. Gregory of Thessalonica, second Sunday of Lent, is a small level saint. Um, I have to see what else I have here. What? Can you repeat Yeah, um, I will do that 
but if I'm if if I didn't get yours, then they've all gone away. So you have to tell me. Saint Nicholas the Wonder Worker is a high level saint. Yeah. Say, uh, great Martyr Anastasia, middle level saint. Transfiguration is a great feast of the Lord. Gregory of Thessalonica is a low level saint. Nicholas the Wonder Work we have. Transfiguration. Okay, anybody I missed in English? St. John the Theologian is a high level saint, like St. Nicholas. Okay. And in Ukrainian, Svetay Volodymyr Veliki is a big level saint, high level saint. Um, who else do we have? Dimitria is high level saint. Ivana Bohoslova. Ivana high level saint. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So we have in Ukrainian, uh, Sunday, Tone 2, Saint John the Theologian. The name of the church is Saint John the Baptist. Tropar. Okay. Tropar would be Tone 2 because it's. Holostruhi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you would have Ivana Bohoslova, Ivana Hrestitelia, Kondak Koloswan Slava. Oh, Duja Dobre. Oh, no. Okay. But at the end, it would have to be, it would have to be a protection of Christians. Zastupnicia Christiani. Because in a temple named after a saint, the end is always Zastupnicia Christiani. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. But, to Dobre. Dobre. Okay. We don't have much time, so I wanted to spend more time on this, but unfortunately we don't have it. This gives you an idea of what you need to do to be able to, to, to figure these things out. Okay? So what I would suggest is take it home with you. Uh, one thing that's very easy. Who had the transfiguration? I did. Okay. What's for the transfiguration? What are the Tropar and Kodak? Just Tropar. Exactly. Tropar of the transfiguration. Glory both now. Kondak of the transfiguration. Okay. I'm just going to pull up a couple of others just to give you an idea. Uh, Wednesday, Tone 6, St. Nicholas the Wonder Worker, Church of the Holy Resurrection. Okay? So, to do this, you would need to go, because it is a weekday, and it is a feast. It's a church of the Lord. Okay? So, you would go to order to and conducts other days of the week in a church dedicated to the Lord. Right? And it is uh, on... on Commemorate a saint to whom we celebrate a vigil, tropar of the church and of the saint, conduct of the saint and of the church. So where would you look for that here? So what you would have is, the, the, what's the name of the church? The name of the church is Church of the Holy Resurrection. So what's the tropar of the resurrection? Christos Voskres, right. Okay. So, tropar, Christos Voskres, right. Then, you have tropar of the saint, which is Saint Nicholas. Exactly. Glory, conduct of the saint. Both now, conduct of the church, which is hochi dohrobu. Okay. Do you see how that works? What? I don't know. That's a very interesting question. I've never come across that. It would be interesting. During Lent, though, see, I don't think you would do so because, and somebody here got a question about second Sunday of Lent, right? Yes. Okay, second Sunday of Lent, well, what you do, I'm going to go for the, from the new book, you go into the Lenten Triodion, Spostovoi Triodi, you go to the second, sun, second Sunday of the Great Fast, which is on page 424, 425, and this gives you the typicon for that. Remember I said you need end this, end that? So you would do tropar of the Sunday tone, right? And then tropar of St. Gregory, conduct of St. Gregory, conduct of the um, triodion. So no, you wouldn't. Thank God. Okay. Okay, good. Please. Quick question. What, in, in those cases when you have a a temple dedicated, for example, to uh, St. Volodymyr, and his, his tropar uh, mentions his uspinia. And in some cases, I've seen places where the, the entire tropar is kept exactly the same, but rather than saying uspinia, they, they insert the word pamyat. Is such a thing... Well, I think that's more an issue of translation than it is of... Okay. You're still singing the, 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 you know, the, the text. 
So it, we have to have good translations. You know, that's the thing. Okay? Good. So listen, we are, I think we are definitely behind schedule. So I'm going to leave this. If you have any questions about it, write them down, bring them. We'll start out with that at the next session, okay? Okay? So just to remember this. You have the, the, the schematic here for to do that in full. If you're not going to do it in full, first cut out the minor saints, the tropar conduct of the minor saints. If you want to not sing your fight song, that's the next thing that would be fallen off. And in any case, no matter what you do, both now precedes the last either kondak or theotokion. And if there's only one tropar and one kondak, it's that glory both now and the last hymn. Okay? So please remember that, please. Is everyone aware of the Alberta Cantor site that has the Poslidonis, the order, perfectly arranged? Um, it's not perfectly arranged, well, but I just, I was on the phone with Father George last night, don't worry, yeah, we get along fine, yeah. Um, we were talking about exactly this kind of a thing, because he said, you know what, we've got to coordinate this so that we're putting out the same thing. Because you know, uh, uh, this past year, for example, it was, I think, the last, if I'm not mistaken, the last Sunday in November, where he took the service for the Kazan icon of the Mother of God, and I took the service for the Saint of the Day, which is both proper. Because many days have various saints and commemorations, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. So it's just a question. For example, the Greeks don't celebrate Saint Volodymyr. You won't find on the, you know, 15th of July on the old calendar any Greek parishes celebrating that. But the Ukrainian parishes, the Russian parishes, they do, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. We have various saints that we commemorate, and we commemorate them at various levels, okay? So it's just a question of you know, who we choose and, you know, what we're going to do. And there's always an element of um, choice involved for that, okay? But yeah, the ABCA, www.abca.org, is it? I think, anyway, I, I'll, I'll pull it up for you later. Uh, it's a very good site, yeah, if you, if you know that. They give everything in the Galician chant, okay? So it's very good. Anyway, let's move now to the next thing on the list, which is introduction of tones 8 and 1. Okay.